in the last module we ended with a definition and a proposition regarding absolute and conditional convergence let me just recall the definition because it's going to be the central uh, aspect of this particular lecture definition suppose suppose an is a sequence such that summation mod a n converges then we say summation a n converges absolutely not a very creative name but nevertheless it serves the purpose if summation a n converges but summation mod a n does not then summation a n is said to be conditionally convergent conditionally convergent we also stated a proposition proposition if summation a n converges absolutely then summation a n converges okay let's see a proof of this it is actually done already but since this is the central portion of this i'll give a quick proof leaving the details to you okay since summation mod an converges that's the hypothesis for epsilon greater than 0 we can find n epsilon such that if n is greater than m is greater than n epsilon then summation j equals m to n mod aj is less than epsilon this is just the cauchy criterion one side of the cauchy criterion remember cauchy criterion is an if and only if condition but summation j equals m to n aj modulus is less than summation j equal to m to n mod aj is less than epsilon this is just triangle inequality so again by the other direction of cauchy criterion so by cauchy criterion summation mod an converges so this was a fairly straightforward and easy proof now we are going to be studying series now that converge but conditionally not absolutely and the study of such series is really interesting that is best seen by studying an actual example let's take the example of the alternating harmonic series harmonic series this is the sum 1 minus half plus 1 by 3 minus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 5 minus 1 by 6 and so on okay now actually it's better if i write a few more terms you will understand why in a moment let me just move this little bit to the side so that i can write a few more terms i missed the 6 minus 1 by 6 <clears throat> plus 1 by 7 minus 1 by 8 plus 1 by 9 minus 1 by 10 plus dot 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 okay this is the alternating harmonic series it's just the series summation 1 by n where i have inserted minuses at every other place okay now we know that this series is not absolutely convergent because the harmonic series diverges this series is not absolutely convergent okay now let us for the time being assume that this converges to some l this is equal to some l let's say i'm not going to compute l now nor am am i going to show 
that this series in fact converges to something at all right now we will see it in a more general theorem because proving that this series converges is the same as proving a much more general fact there is no additional difficulty i will do that in a moment that's the alternating series test but let's just assume for the time being that this converges to l bear with me for a few minutes okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to explore a question that i had raised all the way back in the beginning about whether you can manipulate infinite series with the same level of freedom with which you can manipulate finite series you can rearrange the terms of a finite series you can group terms together and so on all the familiar laws of arithmetic hold but what about infinite series manipulation let's see what happens if we manipulate this series what i'm going to do is the following i'm going to rewrite this as 1 minus half plus 1 by 3 uh no that's not the way i'm going to do it i'm not change anything at all uh what i'll do is i'll move this minus 1 by 4 here then put 1 by 3 here okay so all i have done is i have grouped together two negative terms then what i'm going to do is i'm going to group the next two negative terms 1 by minus 6 and 1 minus 8 then the positive term is going to come okay then i'm going to group the next two negative terms which i am not mistaken is minus 1 by 10 and minus 1 by 12 and the next positive term is 1 by 7 plus dot 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 okay note very carefully that every term in the original series will occur here but in a different position because instead of alternating one positive and one negative i am taking one positive two negative one positive two negative one positive two negative so on so what i will do now is i'm going to group these terms together after doing this rearrangement i'm going to write it as 1 minus half minus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 3 minus 1 by 6 minus 1 by 8 plus 1 by 5 minus 1 by 10 minus 1 by 12 and you get the picture what is happening okay now this is just half minus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 6 minus 1 by 8 plus 1 by 10 minus 1 by 12 so on you can just see that this is what will happen if you do this manipulation please check this rigorously i'm being a bit hand wavy because there's nothing really deep happening this is just basic arithmetic okay wonderful now this is just half into 1 minus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 minus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 5 minus 1 by 6 and so on lo and behold this is the original series okay so if this original series were to converge to l then this rearrangement where i have just bunched together terms in a different way this should converge to half l so something interesting is happening if you rearrange the terms of this series which is not absolutely convergent but it is actually convergent which we are going to see now then if you rearrange you get a different value for the sum in fact you get half of the original value now i leave it to you to check what will happen if i group these terms differently instead of one positive and two negative what if you do one positive three negative two positive five negative okay if you are not able to make headway please google search rearranging the alternating series i'll give you a link below and just see the various results that have been done what and all can you get by rearranging this okay in the next module i will prove a very abstract theorem or rather sketch the proof of a very abstract theorem saying that you can rearrange and get anything that's a precise statement called the riemann's rearrangement theorem you can get anything by just rearranging the terms here okay so but i am talking about specific rearrangements in this module where some positive terms are grouped together then negative terms are grouped together that is it's a fixed pattern and you will get some interesting stuff okay so now 
it is interesting to see whether this alternating series actually converges this alternating harmonic series that's the content of the next theorem which is also called the alternating series test alternating series test or leibniz test leibniz test this is as follows suppose an is a decreasing sequence of positive reals and an converges to zero then summation minus 1 power n plus 1 an converges if you have a series of alternating terms such that after you throw away the sign if you consider the sequence a n and that sequence a n goes to zero moreover it is all going to be greater than or equal to zero and decreasing then the series converges minus one power n plus one a n converges before i give the proof i want you to solve this exercise solve it right now in your head you need not write down a proof uh, instantly but just solve it right now in the end uh, right now in your head suppose a n is a sequence and the or rather suppose let me just change it slightly suppose summation a n is a series such that the odd partial sums sm or rather s2m i am just taking the partial sums of even number of terms collected together and uh, uh, so this is 2m plus 1 and even partial sums sorry even partial sums sums s2m both converge to l then summation an equals l suppose i am giving you a series such that i know that if i collect together even number of terms that means the first sum of the first two terms the sum of the first four terms the sum of the first six eight ten twelve so on that sequence converges to l then i can uh, consider the first the first three the first five the first seven so on that's the e odd partial sums if that also converges to l then the whole series converges to l this is a rather straightforward exercise that falls out on your lap immediately from the very definition of convergence now let's prove the theorem let's give the proof of the theorem i am going to assume this exercise that's why i want you to solve this exercise immediately in your head at least if not on pencil and paper okay now aim is to analyze is to analyze s2m and s2m plus 1 okay let's just analyze s2m first okay so what is the s2m going to be it's going to be first term is a1 minus a2 then a1 minus a2 plus a3 minus a4 and so on okay now observe the following this a1 minus a2 is certainly going to be less than or equal to a1 right now when you are adding back a3 a3 in absolute value is certainly less than a2 right so i have subtracted a2 but added back something of value less than a2 then i am subtracting a4 again whatever happens this is also going to be less than or equal to a1 okay and if you observe carefully at every point of time when i'm adding two terms the magnitude of those two terms will always be a positive quantity because for for instance here i'm adding a3 minus a4 okay i'm always going to be adding a positive quantity but that positive quantity cannot offset the negativity coming from the previous quantity 
okay so at each stage i will always get less than or equal to a1 moreover it's an increasing sequence both should be very patently clear from what I, what i have said so s2m is an increasing sequence increasing sequence bounded above bounded above by a1 okay so by monotone convergence theorem s2m converges to some l1 okay now let's look at s2m plus 1 so the first term will be a1 then it will be a1 minus a2 plus a3 then a1 minus a2 plus a3 minus a4 plus a5 okay so these are the first few terms now observe that these are all going to be um, greater than or equal to 0 let's see why that is the case let's see why this is the case now a1 is certainly greater than or equal to 0 simply because a1 is a positive quantity now i am subtracting a quantity a2 whose magnitude is less than a1 so i am left with a positive quantity then i am adding back another positive quantity a3 so this will be greater than or equal to 0 in a similar way you can see that all these terms will be greater than or equal to 0 i will always be subtracting a quantity and then adding back so in any case uh, it will always be a positive quantity moreover look at what is happening i have subtracted a2 from a1 and added back a quantity whose magnitude is less than a2 because a3 is less than or equal to a2 similarly in this i have subtracted a4 but added back a quantity whose magnitude is lesser so s2m plus 1 is a decreasing sequence is a decreasing sequence bounded below below by 0 ok so s 2 m plus 1 converges to some l 2 ok now notice notice that if I consider if I consider limit m going to infinity s 2 m plus 1 minus s 2 m I am left with limit m going to infinity of a 2 m plus 1 which which goes to 0 right which goes to 0 why does a 2 m plus 1 go to 0 because that is in their hypothesis that the sequence a m converges to 0 so a 2 m plus 1 will also converge to 0 what does this tell us this tells us that limit of m going to infinity s 2 m minus 2 m plus 1 minus 2 2 m which is nothing but l 1 minus l 2 this is 0 or in other words l 1 equal to l 2 now by exercise we are done by exercise we are done okay so we have now shown that if you have an alternating series with the terms of the sequence going to 0 and decreasing and positive then the alternating series converges okay so this concludes this module in the next module we will see the famous Riemann's rearrangement theorem and also see that if you have an absolutely convergent series then you can rearrange without this fear this is a course on real analysis and you have just watched the module on absolute convergence and conditional convergence.